Hi, this is Eleanor again. Today we will present a little tutorial on how to clean and begin to prepare your fossils. For this, I would like to introduce Dr. Ronnie Mike Leader. He is a professional paleontologist on the fossil project team and he's happy to answer any questions that you might have about anything to do with either fossils or paleontology in general. Right now, we will discuss what to do after you first find a fossil. So, hey Ronnie. Hi Eleanor. Look at this cool fossil I found. Yeah, it's a what, cool fossil. What do I do with it? Okay, let's find out. Sure. So, what do we have here? So, we do have here um, a fossil shell um, of a muscle, a prehistoric muscle. Um, you can easily see it's a skeleton, but you cannot identify it uh, to a species or genus level because most of the diagnostic features are covered by sediments like sand or clay. So the first thing that we have to do right now is to clean the fossil. That may sound kind of easy, but like you will see, it's not that easy. So because it depends on fossil, um, is it a solid, rigid fossil, or is it a fragile fossil? Um, it depends on, is it embedded in a matrix mm -hmm. or not? What kind of matrix is it? And all those cases um, lead us um, to make a decision. What tools do we need to clean the fossil? So we have to decide. And at this point, we need to show you different samples of fossils. And we can guide you through all those different types and show you what kind of tools we need to use. Mm -hmm. So, because this is a kind of rigid fossil, unstable fossil, the simple way is just to clean it with a pencil or with a brush, a rigid uh, bristle brush. Mm -hmm. So, like that one, you can use a toothbrush or such a brush and you can clean it under a water flow, rinse of water. And you could easily do this also in field. In this case we found it at the Calvert Cliffs in Maryland. So this is at the ocean front, this is at the beach. Kind of easy. Just clean it in the ocean, but you can also do it in a pond or a river or something like this. It's around. Okay, now we are here at our lab sink. We just turn on the water and clean our fossil with a customary toothbrush like this one here and we scrub all the adherent residues and rinse off everything under the water flow um, and because of the sturdy character of the shell we can do this with some kind of pressure um, but still have to be very carefully not to damage the shell itself nor to raise some of the important diagnostic features like the hinge with its special teeth so we do this on both sides and after that we do have a very clean and nice fossil. So okay, now we are back. We just cleaned the scallop. You see it's now beautiful, clean. Um, but it's much more difficult when you have to clean a very fragile object, a very fragile fossil. For example, um, fossil leaves that are embedded in a matrix, a clay matrix, this is even harder to clean. Um, for example, you see it here, we have that fossil leaf embedded in that clay, and there might be two situations. So the optimum, the best situation, might be that you just split um, a fossil clay block and you will get the leaf preserved perfectly <laughs> with all the diagnostic features just out of the box. Perfect. Lucky you. Just take it and put it in your collection. <laughs> Excellent. But in most of the cases it's not like that. In most of the cases the fossil leaves or parts of the fossil leaf might be covered by sediment like sheets of clay or sand or mud and then you have to decide how to get it off. But sometimes the leaves are also covered by other leaves and you have to decide yeah. which one should I keep. That can and, be very tough. <laughs> right, and which one do I have to uh, take off. So it's not that easy. And you need also very special tools. You cannot act um, with hard tools, with 
um, stiff brushes, something like that, you need special tools. And because of that, um, preparation process is very, very different. Uh, we decided uh, to get uh, to give you another tutorial, a special tutorial in leaf preparation or fossil plant preparation. So, so keep tuned for that, um, and, and we'll be presenting that at a later time. Right. Okay. But there might also be other fragile objects like gastropods or ammonites and those shells um, also might um, have preserved mother of pearl or delicate sculptured surface with spines and crest like you can see here. And you should always treat stuff like that very, very carefully. So in this case, don't use a hard bristle brush and don't rinse it underwater. So, all you can do is try to remove um, the sediments or the dust with a very soft um, paintbrush, an artist's paintbrush, and other fine instruments. So it is very important that you take this process slowly and carefully. Mm -hmm. um, and I would recommend for this, I'm always using a scope, like that one that I have here. So with that scope, you can easily follow the pro process step by step, corn by corn, right? Right. However, not everyone has access to a microscope at home. So what do you do in that case? Good point, Eleanor. You're totally right. So in this case, I always recommend um, people be creative. <laughs> so sounds funny, but it's like that. You can easily use just a regular magnifying glass like that one here, it works as well, but you have to make sure that you fix it, that you um, bring it on uh, an arm. So maybe like, something yeah, like this. It might look like this one, right? Because in that way, you are able to use both hands. Yeah. You get free operation possibilities, right? So, um, and it's also very, very helpful um, that you place your fossil object on a solid surface that it's kind of fixed. Mm -hmm. um, and I recommend using sandbags. So we have one like here. Like we have here, right. Like this. And you can easily place your fossil object, like this gastropod shell, in the middle of the sandbag. Shake it a bit, push it a bit, and then it's stable, right? and you can use your hands and you don't have to hold it all the time. You still will hold the object when it's in a magnifying glass like this, but that way you have more possibility. Right? And if you'd like to do this kind of work frequently, um, you can always purchase either a swan neck or a crane neck style um, magnifier. Like looks kind this. of like this. <laughs> um, and you can get such items at craft stores like Joanne Fabrics. Right.